on November 24, 1971, a white male entered the Portland International Airport in Portland, Oregon. The man was described as being in his mid-40s, standing between 5 feet 10 inches and 6 feet 0 inches tall, and weighing between 170 to 180 pounds. The man was carrying a black attaché case or briefcase and was wearing a black coat over a black suit, a white shirt, and a black tie. The man approached the Northwest Airlines flight counter and, using the alias Dan Cooper, purchased the one-way ticket on Flight 305 to Seattle, Washington. Cooper confirmed the plane would be a Boeing 727 aircraft and paid for his ticket with cash. Due to airport policies at the time passengers were not required to provide any form of identification, passengers were not required to go through metal detectors, and luggage was not x-rayed. Cooper boarded the plane and took a seat near the rear of the cabin in row 18. Flight 305 to Seattle took off from Portland International Airport at 2.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. After takeoff Cooper passed a note to a flight attendant, instructed the attendant to read the note, and informed the attendant he had a bomb in his briefcase. The attendant read the note which instructed her to sit next to Cooper. The note stated there was a bomb, the plane was being hijacked, and the bomb would be used if his demands were not met. The man showed the attendant the contents of his briefcase which contained eight red cylinders and a large battery. The man gave his demands to the flight attendant. Cooper demanded $200,000 in small unmarked denominations of American currency, for parachutes, and a fuel truck to be standing by to refuel the aircraft on its arrival in Seattle. The flight attendant informed the flight's captain of Cooper the bomb, and Cooper's demands. The captain contacted Seattle Tacoma International Airport Air Traffic Control to inform the airport of the hijacking and Cooper's demands. Law enforcement was contacted, and Northwest Airlines agreed to cooperate with Cooper's demands and ordered all employees to cooperate with the hijacker. The Federal Bureau of Investigation assisted Northwest Airlines in obtaining the ransom money and parachutes. Ten thousand unmarked $20 bills were obtained, the serial numbers were recorded, and each bill was photographed. At 5.24 p.m. the airline informed Cooper his demands were met. At 5.39 p.m. Flight 305 landed at Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Cooper instructed the plane to be taxied to an isolated and brightly lit area of the tarmac and all lights in the plane extinguished. The ransom money and parachutes were delivered to the plane and Cooper permitted the passengers and some of the crew to leave the plane. While the plane was being refueled, Cooper gave his final instructions to the remaining flight crew the plane would fly a southeast course from Seattle towards Mexico City maintaining the minimum possible airspeed, the maximum altitude of 10,000 feet, flaps at 15 degrees, the landing gear down, the cabin unpressurized, and the rear exit door open. The crew informed Cooper the door must be closed during takeoff, and Cooper finally consented. At 7.40 p.m. the plane took off from Seattle Tacoma International Airport with Cooper and four crew members. Multiple military aircraft escorted the plane without being visible to Cooper. Once in the air, Cooper instructed all the flight crew to enter the cockpit and close the door. At 8 o'clock p.m. a warning light in the cockpit indicated that the rear exit door was being accessed. Shortly after the warning light the crew noticed a sudden change of air pressure in the cabin. The plane landed at 10.15 p.m. in Reno, Nevada. Federal, state, county, and local law enforcement surrounded the plane but a search quickly revealed that Cooper was not on board. 
Investigators determined that Cooper had jumped from the plane somewhere near the Washington or Oregon border. Fingerprints were recovered from the plane along with the black tie Cooper was wearing. Eyewitnesses who encountered Cooper were interviewed and a series of composite sketches were constructed. The massive manhunt ensued and the area of Cooper's estimated jump from the aircraft was extensively searched. No trace of Cooper, the parachutes, or the money was located. In November 1976, the Portland Grand Jury indicted the individual using the alias Dan Cooper for air piracy and violation of the Hobbs Act. In 1978, a placard from Flight 305's back stairs were located near Castle Rock, Washington. In 1980, three packets of cash were located near Vancouver, Washington. The cash was severely damaged by water. The FBI confirmed the cash was part of the Cooper ransom money and the bills were in the same order as they had been originally given to Culper. The three packets contained two packs of 100 bills and one pack of 90 bills, which was missing 10 bills. These bills only account for 290 of the 10,000 bills included in the ransom. The rest of the bills have never been located. The serial numbers of the Cooper ransom are available online for search. The FBI has investigated thousands of possible suspects in the Cooper case but has ruled out all of these suspects based on physical descriptions, criminal profiles, fingerprint evidence, and DNA retrieved from Cooper's tie. The FBI maintains an open case file for the Cooper hijacking. The case remains the only unsolved air hijacking case in American history. If you have any information regarding this case or the identity of Dan Cooper, contact the Federal Bureau of Investigation or your local law enforcement agency.